So we can get started. Um, first and foremost, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, it's going to be a great day. It's great to have, we've almost got 40 people on the call today, which means y'all are going to be arming your chapters with really great information. I'm going to take it back old school a little bit. Um, you're going to bring you back to your civics days of like seventh and eighth grade, but it's all going to be great because everybody could use a refresher. Um, but at any point in time, if you have a question, feel free to, um, interject. Um, we don't need to, it doesn't need to be super formal. We're all friends, but I do want to try to get through all the slides. So um, if you have a question that you feel like you could wait until the end, um, then we can see everybody's faces in one screen when we do that dialogue. So let's get started. Understanding the nation's legislature. First, I want to start with a brief video. Um, this is just to kind of get you excited for the year, kind of see where we've come. Saw some really cool hairstyles that I wish we could bring back. So just to get everybody excited, let's just watch it really quickly. And this was a video that was used during the 40th anniversary, but I think it encapsulates, you can kind of see the flavor of everything that's happened with Nabo. And if I have a technical difficulty, it's going to drive me crazy. Oh. For some reason, it's not working. Okay. Well, if I get it working by the end, we will go to that video or I will send it to you in an email because for some reason it is not playing for me. Oh, wait, let me try this. No, okay. Oh, oh yes, great. In 1975, a group of 12 like-minded businesswomen in the DC area created a professional community to further and strengthen their entrepreneurial interests. That group quickly grew to become what is now known as the National Association of Women Business Owners. Since then, NABO has risen to become the strong and unified voice of more than 10 million women-owned businesses across the country. Elle, did we lose, did we lose volume or is that just me? I no, can't hear it either. Y'all okay. lost volume? Yeah, we can't no, hear it. I apologize guys, I'm hearing it. No, I think can't. you have to enable it in Zoom. You have to well, start over, we're missing it. <laughs> I will send you a link to the video. It's, I just wanted to get y'all excited. And who doesn't love an 80s hairstyle? I mean, it just gets you revved up for the day. Um, but I can share the link later. It's on um, Nabo's YouTube channel. All right, so let's get started. All right, our nation's capital. We've got the executive branch. Raise your hand if you know what that is. Great, that's like everybody. Um, if you if you don't remember from civics days, um, the executive branch that includes you know the president and the president's uh, the administration and the agencies such as the Department of Commerce, the Department of Defense, the Small Business Administration, those are parts of the executive branch. Then the legislative branch, which is the U.S. Senate and House, and the U.S. House of Representatives, and the judicial branch. The reason why I put this slide here is to kind of show you that there are the three branches, but then graying out the judicial branch, because in most cases, NABO is gonna be dealing with focusing on the executive and the legislative branch in our advocacy efforts. All right, today's focus is specifically the legislative branch. Next month in October, we'll be talking about the executive branch, but today we're focusing on the legislature. And then at the end, so in November, we'll bring um, everything, kind of full circle and look at where NABO intersects in both the legislative and executive branches to advocate on the on women business owners. And just to touch on that video, because I'm realizing I, I didn't touch on this earlier, it said 10 million women business owners, we're now over 12 million. So um, just to let y'all know. All right, the US Senate. 
This is also referred to as the upper chamber. It is also the place where there are two people from, there are two senators from each state. Um, if you can't re recall, they're elected every six years. Um, they have six-year terms and every two years, so let's say um, every two years, that, that's another election cycle, right? Every two years, you're voting on your House of Representatives and every two years, a third of the Senate can turn over. So that's that third is looking at re-election. So let's say you live in Tennessee and all of a sudden your senator is like showing up everywhere. You see them at the coffee shop, you see them at like events. Chances are they're facing re-election and you haven't seen them for a while because it's been six years. Um, the Senate is the only place where of the two chambers, the Senate is the only chamber that can confer confirm presidential appointees. So that's um, secretaries, cabinet members, those le that level in the administration, undersecretaries, um, the Senate confirms those. Sometimes there's a little tension with the House because the House wants to be notified of people that are nominees, but they are not actually part of the official process of getting those people confirmed. So that is something that, you know, brush your shoulders off senators, you get to um, put all those people across the finish line. You've probably also seen in the news, um, a lot of the defense sec like secretaries and undersecretaries, there are people holding them. Um, we'll get into how the Senate has uh, a little more power than the House on um, getting things through. So the Senate favors deliberation, it takes longer, you're gonna see them work on legislation, you'll see bills on the floor for longer periods of time. You're gonna see them only passing maybe a couple things a year at this rate at how they're going right now um very different than the house um in the senate you have the majority leader that proposes items for consideration so just because a bill passes out of committee which we'll get to in a moment doesn't mean that it's actually going to get cons consideration on the senate floor and what I mean by the Senate floor is something, a bill that that will actually voted, be voted on in the in the U.S. Senate. We just call it, I don't know, you know, like I should have looked up. We just call it the floor. We call it the Senate floor. So if you hear that lingo, it's just talking about what bills are currently active on in the Senate that day. Um, negotiations are done with all the members. It's very um, member, you know, one member holds a lot more power in the Senate than they do in the House because you have to reach a 60 vote threshold to move a bill in the Senate. So before they even get to debate or discussion, you have to reach that cloture vote and that's a 60 vote threshold. So regardless normally who's in power, for example, the Democratic Party whole is the majority leader. Um, yeah, the Democratic Party, sorry, I'm, I was like thinking house in my head and I was like, wait, I said the wrong thing. Um, the Senate is empowers the Democrats. So, but normally there's not like a, it's a closer split than just 60, like all you need is to just get all the Democrats. No, you're always, in many cases now, you're gonna have to be bringing over people from the other party and negotiating it to reach that 60. So that's why you're going to see a lot more working across the aisle, a lot more bi bipartisanship on in the Senate. Committees. So a lot of times we'll say, you know, um, we're working with the Small Business Committee on legislation that will impact work um, issues within your business. Or we were talking to joint tax about a tip um, beauty, beauticians right now, if you own a beauty salon, we were talking about this before y'all got on the call. If you own a beauty salon right now and your worker um, gets $100 in tips, you're paying the percentage of, as a beauty salon owner, the percentage of the FICA tips and you don't get any of that money. You didn't receive any of that tip money. It went all to your beautician, but you're going to pay taxes on it. Right now, the restaurants don't have to pay, they get a credit for those taxes that they pay on their employees' tips. So right now, beauty salons are asking for parity. Who's going to be writing that bill? Who's going to be putting that? Well, it's already a bill right now, but who's going to be kind of working on and improving that bill to get it to um, 
the Senate floor or the House floor or through committee is going to be the Joint Committee on Taxation. So members normally say on the same committee to become experts on a, on a specific topic in the Senate. So let's say you become a senator in 2010. Chances are, if you're reelected again and it's, you know, it's 2020 at this point, you're probably, if you started in the Small Business Committee, you're probably going to stay there. You're probably going to do your tenure within the Small Business Committee or the Armed Services Committee. You're going to be on other committees, but if your um, region of the country, let's say you're heavily agricultural, you're going to stay on that committee. You're going to become an expert on the topics that they discuss. You're going to know the ins and outs of legislation that's happened for a decade because in the Senate, they want you to have that education that you want they want your staff to be zoned in on the specific topics that you're working on within your committee um a lot of times we talk about the chair of the senate small business committee the chair is the lead member of the majority party did everybody follow that so the chair is the top dog in the senate committee that is from the majority party the ranking member is the senior member of the minority party. So there, we'll go to later to slides, but you'll see that they stack out the members in order, not in order of seniority. So depending on how, like if you go be a ranking member of this committee and then you might look like lose a little bit of seniority within your committee. So you can kind of see who's gonna be coming down the pike to be the next chair or the next ranking member for each political party. Um, the makeup resembles that of the legislator. So if we've got two thirds Republican, one third Democrat, you're going to see two thirds of the committee are Republicans, one third are Democrat. Everybody follow that? Um, they create legislation and they also perform oversight. All right. So not only are they looking at bills, marking up bills, we'll get to what that means later. Um, they are also doing oversight of agencies. So um, the Small Business Committee that I've mentioned that we work with a lot, they oversee the U.S. Small Business Administration and perform oversight. So during COVID, when we had all those relief programs, they were doing a lot of he oversight hearings. All right. This is a list of all the Senate committees. I have bolded the ones that we work with um, a lot. Um, italicized is the one committee that will pass a bill every year. I cannot say the same for any of the other committees. Only the Armed Services Committee will definitely pass a bill. Pretty sad, but that's just the state of the game right now. Um, a lot of times each year, we know we're going to get through a bill from Armed Services, and then we're probably going to have an omnibus or some form of spending bill at the end of the year that's going to lump in a bunch of stuff. And then we're all going to go home for the holidays. Um, that's just how the nature, that's just the nature of things right now. Um, prior to that, we used to have, you know, um, you know, for example, when I was on the Hill, um, we passed like a huge piece of small business legislation. That was what came out of our committee that year. Um, you were doing a lot more legislation to improve different parts of our economy. Now that's just not the case. The one thing that we know that they will do is ensure that our military is ready. Other than that, we're going to have a big roundup of spending stuff at the end of the year, but we can't count on every year that we're going to have an agricultural bill. We can't count on every year that we're going to do something that's going to pass the finish line in um, judiciary. It's just not the case anymore. All right, the House of Representatives. The lower chamber, um, they may not like that term, but that is what they are. Um, they are elected every two years and they serve your congressional district. Um, I'm gonna show you later on where you can go find that if you can't recall who yours is or you're looking, maybe your chapter covers a couple congressional districts. You wanna see who all they cover. Um, I'll show you how to do that later. Um, all revenue bills, um, spending bills have to originate in the house. So you'll see stuff that does have to do with spending. We got to get it through the House, which is a completely different animal than the Senate sometimes, to then have it pass through the Senate. Difference in the House is it's just a simple majority and they pass legislation really quick. You could have like, I don't know, 12 post offices named by the end of the day. 
you're not going to see that. That doesn't happen in the Senate. But in the House, there's a lot of resolutions that'll go through. They'll pass a ton of bills. Like they could pass like seven bills out of the Small Business Committee and then they could go to the House floor and they bipartisan, they all like swim by and then they sit because the Senate is not deliberating on them. So let's see. Next up. As you can guess, similar to the majority leader, the Speaker of the House sets the policy agenda and decides what gets, again, that word floor consideration. What do we get that is actually active in the House of Representatives that's decided on by the Speaker? What's interesting is, is on the Senate side, I mean, on the House side, well, first I'll get to this and then I won't get ahead of myself. Um, these are all the House committees. You'll see the Joint Committees cross Senate and House, so you'll see the same ones, but there's a little differences, but for the most part, you see, you know, like there isn't, it's financial services, not finance. Um, but again, the italicized ones are the ones that we work on mostly. And again, armed services, they get the bill that passes. Bill drafting. All right. Who's writing all this stuff? Is it a bunch of 22 year olds or maybe they, maybe they've hit their thirties in the Senate. We don't know. Um, a lot of people write bills. Uh, members of Congress write bills. You could get a bill from the um, from the executive branch. The president could have an idea, ask his staff to send something to try to get some senator to put their name on it. Um, outside groups can draft bills. So similar to the Beauty Association's bill, they probably, you know, worked with staff, but they could have helped with the beginning drafting of it. Um, it does it doesn't matter but what you need is a member of congress to actually put the bill forward in writing however so let's say you draft a bill or let's say the 22 year old house staffer or you know whatever staffer you talk to a staffer in your congressional office and on the house side and you say listen nabo's advocating for um we want to make sure that women have the workforce that they need and we're concerned about the independent contractor ruling, and we would like to, you know, get ahead of the game and make sure that in legislation, um, women business owners of a certain size can have part-time independent contractors in their workforce. Um, and the staffer's like, man, this is a great idea. My boss would love it. Um, we're totally into it. Can you like write some thoughts down for me? So you send an email, write down your thoughts, they take your thoughts. Maybe they're a lawyer. Maybe they have some background in this. Maybe they draft a little bit of like where they think it would fit in statute and law. Um, or maybe they were not a lawyer, i.e. me. Um, and they decided, you know what? I don't know how to draft this, but I have the ideas. I know what we need to do. I even can figure out where to put it in the statute, but I'm going to send it to ledge council. Legislative councils, nonpartisan, you know, just people that you work with when you're a House or Senate staffer, they'll review your proposal and then they'll help you draft the legislative language. So regardless of who starts with the idea, legislative council is going to put their pen on it and they're going to make sure that it they've dotted every I, crossed every T um, before it becomes an actual bill and is introduced by a member of Congress. In the House, once the bill is written by um, a House, once the bill is sponsored by a member of Congress, the parliamentarian who is nonpartisan will then tell the Speaker of the House, hey, this issue has to do with small business. It needs to go under the small business jurisdiction. Um, what does that mean? That means that that bill will then be under the purview of the Small Business Committee for them to look at it examine it and um, maybe mark it up, which is basically editing it to improve it um, before it moves forward. In Senate bills, you can go to committee, you can go straight to the floor. It just depends. But um, if you are going to work on it in a committee, the chair decides if a bill will receive a formal markup. So in order for a bill or a piece of legislation in committee to be marked up, to be addressed, looked at, improved by members, the chair has to identify it. So you got to have people working on just the committee, not only the committee members, but working on the chair and ranking member to try to get it 
to mark up. But again, things happen differently now. Some of these things will never be marked up. They will just be added on a big bill at the end of the year. All right. So this, I've done a lot of this orally. Some people are more visual. This gives you the visual picture of the process. House, you're starting with, it goes to the subcommittee, then the committee, then rules committee, which is a separate committee that decides if it's germane to the purview of the house. Then it goes to full committee. In the Senate, same thing, subcommittee, committee. It does not have a rules committee though. It would then go to the full Senate. If something passes both the House and the Senate, then it goes to conference. The conference committee is made up between committees, between several different members in leadership, ranking and chair. Um, for example, and it's people that are have that it's people that are under their jurisdiction is included in the bill. So for example, I had a call, this was um back in July, I had a call from a NABO member that said, hey. I think in 2018 it was, there was a bill, it was the armed services bill, and they were supposed to do some, some procurement stuff for women, and it didn't get through. What happened? Because it passed the House and it didn't, it, and it wasn't in the Senate bill, but when they went to conference, I don't know why it didn't cross the finish line. And I thought to myself, huh, oh, the date, it's probably a Rand Paul thing, but I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to trust my memory because, you know, our memories go. So I said, let me get back to you. Let me call the staff. So I called the Senate staffer and I said, hey, take your brain back a couple of years. Um, what happened with that procurement bill that was on the House side, like the House's National Defense Authorization Act, which they call NDAA? It's like it was in the House NDAA, but it wasn't in yours. Did Rand Paul do something there? And she was like, oh, yeah, that was the year when Rand Paul was the ranking member and anything that had was small business related they pulled it it's like all right that's what happened so just because it passes the house it doesn't mean it's getting to the finish line when they go to com conference is when things get put in things get pulled out things can happen um a lot of times though they're not talking to in those conversations they're not taking talking to us as as advocates as much a lot of that is like a more political. Um, we can give our two cents, but sometimes it comes down to politics, unfortunately. Um, so then after conference committee, it goes back to the full house and the Senate, both approve it, president's desk, and then he has veto power. Is everybody kind of following what I'm, okay, great. Um, Cause I'm just a talking and y'all aren't a saying anything. All right. So hearings, um, how does a hearing work? What is a hearing? Um, hearings are a way for members of Congress to understand what is going on. Whether it is oversight of a specific agency, such as, um, as I gave the example earlier about COVID programs with the Small Business Administration, maybe it's the Small Business Administration coming up and talking about what went wrong, what worked, what we should never, ever do again. Or maybe they're marking up that um, tip credit for beauty salons to make it par have parity with restaurants. And maybe they bring in a bunch of beauty salon owners and talk about how the bill would help how could they improve it? What impact would it have on their businesses? Yes, a question. Okay, so how accessible, what is that process for who chooses the witnesses? Like what's the process for someone to give witness for a bill? That a lot of times depends on how much we are available. So a lot of times like NABO has been asked but sometimes it's they ask like the week before and the person that NABO, like maybe NABO members haven't told us they're an expert in the area and the, the NABO person that we know that is an expert isn't available. So maybe we're unable to send somebody, but we try 
as much as we can to tell people that our women would be willing to talk and willing to be available and make themselves available those, for those hearings. The trouble is, is let's say you live in Oklahoma and they tell you, hey, we've decided to do a hearing next week at 2 p.m. on Thursday and you have a huge client meeting. Well, I mean, are you going to go to D.C. or are you going to like land the client? I, that, that's a decision you have to make, right? So um, that's why sometimes it always doesn't work out, but um, we are in constant contact for those types of opportunities. All right, so what does the hearing look like? It starts with opening statements from that chair and ranking, those two senior members of the majority and minority parties in the committee. Um, they give their remarks, then each witness gives about a five minute introduction, tells them like how they feel about today's topic, and then the witnesses receive questions from the members. There could be three panels of witnesses or there could be one panel. It just depends on how they structure that specific hearing. Um, a lot of times what we get from staff is, hey, my boss like SBA is coming up to talk about women's business centers. What issues are y'all having with women business centers? Can you send me five questions about things they, like that they could be asked about it we're doing oversight that's the type of thing and as much as we would love to think that every member of congress is creating these questions they're not they don't have the time so their staff is so their staff is reaching out to organizations like nabo to get those questions to make sure that they're reaching the oversight level that they need to ensure that um these agencies are working well um, all right, so the Senate Committee of Jurisdiction for the Small Business Administration is the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship. Title is a little different than the House. Um, the chair is Senator Ben Cardin from Maryland, and the ranking member is Joni Ernst from Iowa. Um, jo Joni, uh, Senator Ernst is new to the role. Uh, Chairman Cardin's been around in this um, leadership role for a while now. These are all the members from the committee. Uh, as you can see, Cantwell, Shaheen, some of these people have been on committee for years. They've had leadership roles at different times. When they're on different committees, depending on the party, like you can't be chair of two committees for some party, like there's all these rules that we don't need to get into because it doesn't matter. But um, that's why you'll see like, Rand Paul was the ranking member. Now he's third in seniority because when when you're in the Republican Party, once you do something, you don't do it again. But you're still more senior than Ted Budd, who was just elected. But that shows you the seniority of those in the Senate Small Business Committee and the offices that we work with and that are tracking a lot of what your businesses are encountering more so than other senators. In the House. Chair Roger Williams from Texas and Nydia Velasquez from New York. Um, similarly, uh, Nydia, the Democratic Party folks have been around for a while. Uh, Roger Williams has been around for a while, but not in a senior role. And these, as you can see, the committees get much bigger on the House side. Um, Elle, can I interject for just one sure. sec? Um, a number of people are asking if NABO National keeps a list of members who are experts on various topics and how do we submit our qualifications or could we do something like that? Oh, thanks. I did not see all the questions popping up. Um, that's definitely something that we could look into doing. What I would recommend is um, I will send out um, who the national committee chairs are, um, like the national committee members are, and we can maybe, or, or y'all could just email me. Y'all could just email me. If there is an issue area that you are well-versed in, um, you could just email me and I can start creating a list and I can put it into Teams. So we'll have it for all of eternity. Sound good? Um, how does the federal oh. register process, sorry, I'm seeing some of these questions. This is why it's a talk because I can't see these as I'm doing this. I have a question. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So just in terms of the membership, is there like a, a process where every state or representative area is represented or like you can't have two from the same state on the certain committee or is it, is it 
random. Are you talking about the national committee? NABO national? Or no, are you talking I'm about, sorry. oh, on the committee committee? On the Senate committee yeah. or the House committee? You can have people from the same. You can have people from the same. Um, when I when I worked in the Senate, both senators um, from Louisiana were both on the Senate Small Business Committee. Doesn't matter. Sometimes senators come into, for example, um, Senator John McCain, military guy, um, armed services. He was there the whole time. Um, so depending on, and regardless of if another Arizona Senator had military, like they could have both been on armed services together. It's just, they kind of look at what's your background, what region of the country are you from? That's why like, sometimes you'll see multiple from the same state because it's more pertinent to that state. Does that make sense? Michaela, I think that was your voice. Sorry. I can't see everybody's face right now. That work? Thank you. Okay. Um, I also saw in there about the federal register process with bill progression, the federal register regulate regulations, um, happen after it becomes a law, um, and through the administration. So we're going to talk about that next month. So you got to come back for those answers. All right. Now, FBC is, what is it again? Small business Commit committee. Yep, and don't worry at the end i'm gonna have an acronym section just for you guys <laughs> i thought you were All gonna right. say we'll have a quiz at the end so i will i i don't believe in um quizzes for adults only for children <laughs> well that's good thank you um well, that's so as, surprising. as a parent i just think we we did all of our schooling we don't need to be um in that put in that realm okay um, House Small Business Committee. So the Senate Small Business Committee, interestingly enough, does not have subcommittees. However, the House Small Business Committee, House SBC, does have subcommittees. This is how they divide out. Um, and you can see contracting and infrastructure. We'll deal with, I mean, it's self-explanatory. These are the, the separate areas and um, their hearings and subcommittee will be on those areas. Similar to subcommittee assignments as to committee assignments, if you have experience in an area, you're probably going to get put on that subcommittee when you're within the committee. Um, like a New York member, New York City member is probably not going to be on rural development. Okay. All right. You want to watch some of this stuff, don't you? Don't you want to like cuddle up with a nice cup of joe or maybe you a glass of wine and watch this in action? Well, this is where you can find it, guys. This is the um, Senate Small Business Committee website. You click on hearings, and then it'll take you to this view right here, and you can watch all of them. They're all archived online. I've watched many, many, many. So, if you want that kind of entertainment, it is for you. Or maybe you hear like, you know, we're talking about a hearing and you're like, I just want to go see that for myself. That's where you find it. All right. Same goes for the house. A little different of a setup. And just so you know, when the house leadership change changes, they make a new website every single time. So you got to figure this out every single time. In the Senate, they've kept the same website for a really, really long time. The house whoever gets in charge is like, I want to redo the whole thing. And you find a whole new website to every two years. Um, and also they have like a minority website and a majority website. Whereas the Senate's like, oh, we're just going to have one website. Everybody can post to it. It's different in the house. So in the house, you'll see it's under activity and then schedule. Because why even call it hearings? That would be too complicated. Um, and then you can click on the date and click on the hearing that you want to view. All right, congress.gov guys, anytime you wanna know about a bill or you wanna watch the floor or you're like, who is my Congressman? I forgot. Congress.gov is the free resource that um, is online and is super easy to use, but it's a lot of information on a webpage. So I wanted to break it down for you. Um, you can see, where right here, this is where you put in the Congress or the current Congress, but let's say you wanted to look up a bill that happened a long time ago. Um, you would 
date back the Congress. We're in the 118th now. Do the math. I cannot do that in my head off the fly of what Congress was in 2017. Couldn't tell you, but you could figure it out. This is where you put the bill name. It could either be the title of the bill, such as like um, the child care tax credit of 2023, or it could be HR, I'm blanking on the number. Um, you could put either in and it would get you to the bill. Down here, this is house floor video. This will lead you to what activity is happening on the Senate floor. And then this is your, put your zip code in there and you can find out all the information. Who's your Senator? Who's your member of Congress? This is something that you could share with members in your chapter. If they're curious to look up bills, it's an easy one-stop shop for everything. Al, what if you don't know the, the number of the bill? Um, or if you, you know, the name, know the title, if you know the name, you can put it if there. If you know too. the name, you can put that in too. And sometimes I'm like, what was that name? Sometimes I'll put in like, I don't know, what, what example, like you could put That's in child name. care. It'll send, oh. it'll show you a ton of child care bills, but that might be a way that you can kind of start to eliminate. Um, all right, mm -hmm. getting bill information. So you want to get some information about a bill right here. Ah, so this example that I gave was the beauty tax um, credit bill that we were talking about earlier. It's HR 45, the Small Business Tax Fairness and Compliance Simplification, guys, I can't talk now, Simplification Act. On here, you'll see when you search a bill, you'll see there's the title. It'll show you who are, who are the original sponsors or co-sponsors. It'll show you the status, so like where it is, what subcommittee it's in. This has to do with tax, so that's why it's at House Ways and Means because they deal with those issues. But if you want to know all the co-sponsors, you want to make sure that it's bipartisan. You want to make sure that NABO can support it, that right there, you click on that co-sponsor button and you can see an R and a D behind their name to know. This tells you what committee it's in, where is the bill. You can see the full text of it. A lot of times the bill summary kind of puts it in more people language. So while you're reading, instead of reading like legal text, you can look at the summary and kind of put together what it means. When um, when the bill is very, very new, for example, if it's just introduced, it's not going to have a summary right away. It normally takes a little while for these things to get put into the system, um, but eventually it will. All right. Pause. Um, Dr. Gina wants to know if we can get a copy of the slides. Um, I'm sure we can. I just, uh, I Ginedra, uh, I hope I'm saying that correctly, wants to know what makes a bill bipartisan in order to earn NAVO support, which is a fabulous question. That is a great question. Okay. It and can we, let me finish. There's three. Oh, sure, sure, and sure. can we, we will have we will all receive a link to this video, correct? So the chapters can share it in the newsletter. Yes, the yes. beauty of Vivian. Okay, guys. Okay, bipartisan. Bipartisan, there is a bill. When, let's say someone um, starts writing a bill, it's, um, he's a Republican member and he has this really great idea. We love it. It's amazing. Um, I get a phone call. Hey, Elle, we would love to have NABO support. This bill is would be great for women business owners. It's going to provide parity and X space. And we just know that y'all would love it. And I would look, I would say to the staffer, that's great. I know your boss is working really hard for women business owners. We're a bipartisan organization and we need you to get a Democrat on board with you. So staffer goes back. Staffer calls up a bunch of Democratic offices and says, hey, listen, we have this idea. Are you guys interested? Would you want to co-sponsor? We think we can make headway if it's bipartisan. The Democrat looks at the bill, talks to his boss about it, says, yeah, I'm totally on board with this. He becomes a co-sponsor. Now, NABO can support it. It has to follow a more tests than just specifically bipartisan. You know, it's got to be data driven. It's got to be coalition building. It's got to deal with women in business. Um, but for that bipartisan part of the test, it's got to have a Democrat and a Republican on the bill. 
Is just one of the opposing party good enough? Yes. But you prefer because you prefer more bipartisanship. Yeah, it would be great to have five Democrats and five Republicans. But sometimes, like, for example, right now on that, um, sorry, I'm, I'm going back to this bill because I was literally on the Hill for women business owners last week on this beauty thing. So it's like fresh in my mind. Um, that one, for example, Tim Scott's on it, but he's struggling to get other Republicans to help move it. So I talked to a bunch of Republican offices last week being like, I know you don't like it because, you know, you need more revenue. Like, let's see how we can fix this. Let's talk about how we can fix it to try to get more R's on board. And by R's, I mean Republicans. So yes, we would like to see more, but to hit what is required, one R, run one D. But they have to be co-sponsors. Yes, or they need to come on, like when we are supporting it, there has to be an R and D on board at that point. Whether it's um, co-sponsor or not, it, it can right. be. Sometimes, sometimes, like for example, sometimes a Democrat introduces a bill by themselves from the start. So they're not, so when the Republican comes on board, they can no longer be original co-sponsors because the Democrat already introduced it. But they can come on and support it later, in which case it becomes bipartisan. Oh, okay. Everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. This I wanted to give you guys because as a former journalist, I can say this. Cable news is very leaning. And you can watch a lot of cable news. And you could watch one station and get one viewpoint. And you could watch another station and get a completely different viewpoint. And you're like, what? I don't even know what is right. These news outlets, The Hill, Roll Call, Politico, all you have to do is Google it, thehill.com, Roll Call, same same thing. Politico has some, like you have to have uh, pay for some of the articles, but for the most part, you can find out what is happening on Capitol Hill and there is no lean, no bent. Straight up news. It's like you're listening to NPR, um, but on Capitol Hill. Um, these are the outlets that I would recommend if you're like, what is really going on? Chances are, if it's a big thing that's happening on Capitol Hill, each one of these outlets will have a nonpartisan story on it. That would be where I would recommend to go read. All right. Acronyms. I say them a lot. And you're probably like, what is she saying? I just heard like three letters. It might as well be Greek to me. Um, SBA is the US Small Business Administration. Um, Senate SBC is the Senate Small Business Committee. House SBC is the House Small Business Committee or Committee on Small Business. Um, HR 23 is House Bill number 23. S 23, Senate Bill 23. D, Rep Democrat, I almost said Republican. R, Republican. And I'm sure more acronyms will come down the pike and I will try to um, give you more inf uh, more of these snippets yes question um, this has nothing to do with this but i'm fascinated by this whole i think i'm gonna follow this because i have a girlfriend who's um who owns a beauty salon so knowing that this is something you know Nabo's involved with i think i'm gonna use this as my case study to kind of learn all the issues so my question is when you were talking what is one way this even gets to be a thing like who wakes up one day and says entrepreneurs, be beauty salon owners should pay taxes on tips. How does that even happen? Like one way, I know you don't know all, but- What we're trying to do is, is like in, in this specific example, restaurants right now, if a restaurant, if a employee of a restaurant, let's say they get a hundred dollars in an employee like closes out the night, they got a hundred dollars in tips. Um, The restaurant owner, gets a tax credit for the amount of FICA taxes that they have to pay on that amount of tips. They get no nothing from the $100. 
I'm trying to put this in the simplest of terms. Right. They don't get anything from the hundred dollars, but they have to take, they get it and they get a tax credit. So in the end, they get paid back for those taxes that they pay on money that they never got. Right now, beauty salons, which is why when you go get your nails done or you go get your hair done, you're Venmoing for tips oh. is because right now, if a beauty salon gets, if their tips go through, they're paying the FICA tips on money that they never got. So a uh, beautician gets $100 in tips for the day. The beauty salon gets none of that money, but they're still paying the taxes on it and they're not getting a credit on the back end. So there's no parity between the two, um, the two industries. Industries, okay. So what we're talking about is trying to ensure that there's parity between the two industries. Got it, okay. Another question. Yes. Hey, Elle. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just want to share with Benita and some of the people, actually how I really got started into advocacy was a similar issue in North Carolina where um, interior designers, beauty salons, barbers, and bakery uh, uh, places were being taxed on our services. And we were being taxed different than the doctors and the lawyers. And so we went and, and came down um, to the legislation um, in the legislative building in North Carolina began to knock on doors because it was hurting us as business owners because they were wanting to tax us and not tax us the same as everybody else. So I say I shared this to say stay engaged and involved. And L, I really thank you for all that you do because it's a lot of hidden stuff that you don't know that is impacting um, entrepreneurs. This is my commercial again that impacts entrepreneurs that you don't even know all the history behind it until something like this, some type of education occurs. How I found out was other. Uh, interior designers were being hit and they said, okay, we need to form a coalition. So Elle, I thank you for sharing this and everybody just constantly watch what's going on because a lot of things are hitting. I've also worked for a congressman. So I also know um, a little bit about um, this too, but if you would stay close and really pay attention and listen to some of the briefs and, and the hearings and different things, you would be amazed at what you would learn. Thank you. No, thank you. And hopefully we'll get to a little bit of dialogue. I'm going to try to sneak through these really quick. Um, caucus is another definition that I wanted to make sure they all knew about. It's not just the Democratic caucus and the Republican caucus. There are also special interest caucuses such as, you know, the softball caucus. And um, there's like the Republican study committee who would say that they're more, a little more conservative. There's the new democratic coalition who would say we're fiscally conservative, socially progressive. So there's all these other caucuses. So if you hear us talking about caucuses, that's what we're referring to. Markup, that's what we talked about earlier, the editing of bills and committee. Um, next up. Okay, so standing committees, these are committees that happen like they're, they're standing, you're going to budget, finance, uh, small business, like all these ones that we're going to have are like through Congresses, um, special and select committees come and go there. Um, there were some committees that were created out of COVID that have now folded, you know, like they're no longer active, those types of things. Those are the special and select committees. Uh, joint committees are both House and Senate committees working together like that joint committee on taxation. Um, and then they kind of revert back and forth. It's up to them on who's the chair, like who's the chair, if it's someone from the House or someone from the Senate. All right. I wanted to make sure that everybody saw the advocacy in a box in your email. Um, if you haven't, there's my email, or you can reach out to your Novo National Advocacy Committee rep. Um, I wanted to make sure everybody got that because that's how you can get kickstarted and gives you a lot of information and tools. I can't wait to see all of y'all in October. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be um, a great conference. And if you are looking for the next gen track, that's also going to be there. And then everyone, please save the date 
for January 2024 for the Leadership Academy. And that is a wrap, folks. I will stop sharing my screen. And I gave y'all all five minutes to chat. That was my goal. Well, actually, I was hoping for a little bit more. Sorry, I got a little long-winded there. Does anybody have any questions? Now, before you close the Zoom, you're definitely going to want to grab the chat and make sure we've hit everything. And I've been oh, kind of you, answering Andy. things, and hopefully I haven't said anything wrong. <laughs> I will blame you. No, I, yeah, blame me. <laughs> All right. Good job again. Oh, happy birthday. Have a great day. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have anything else? Dawn, I see your hands up. Hi, El. This was a really informative presentation. Thank you. Um, I wondered if you would touch on briefly Bill Riders and um, insertions, what I call hijacking, <laughs> where, you know, sometimes bills make it through various committees and then new things that are unrelated are added. Yes, that a lot of times that can happen in an omnibus. Um, and we can go, we can go more in depth on like how the omnibus works and like what can kind of get thrown in. Um, I feel like that's a longer topic than the time that we have allotted for now. Um, but I think what Don is referencing is, um, and I can just, I'll just speak to it really, really quickly. A lot of times what happens is, is when these big, big mega bills happen, you're going to see a lot of stuff thrown in that would not necessarily have happened if it were just one bill passing. When the staffers get these bills, sometimes they're hundreds upon hundreds of pages and stuff is gonna get snuck in. And it can be not so great. Um, and we've seen it happen. I'm, tr you know, I'm racking my brain right now trying to think of an example. And like, of course, like when you're in this type of scenario, nothing comes to your head. Um, but that is something that I can definitely add Don to, uh, uh, discussion as uh, later in the year. Um, Janadra? Right, thank you. Um, yeah, this has been great. In April, we are in San Diego are going to do some local visits to our electeds. And if we visit one of our congresspersons, can we coordinate that with you? Maybe to get some support on the kind of things we should ask or talk to them about that might be aligned with what's going on in DC. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I get I get emails like that all the time. Um, feel free to reach out and just kind of let me know what office it's state offices that you're going to. Um, and I can kind of let you know what we're working on. For example, this morning I was emailing with Nabo Chicago. They're working on a, um, a response to a news article. Um, and they were looking for some call to action on the national level. So I gave them some of the bills that the national board had just approved that would be helpful in the childcare space. So happy to help with that. Happy to let you know if, um, if you know, to keep move the ball, moving the ball forward. Gosh, ladies. Great. Okay. Thanks. Happy to. Um, Michaela or Bonita, I don't know who was first. Sorry, I didn't say. Bonita was first. Okay. Okay, um, really quick, health alerts. Our chapter, I'm, I'm new into this position. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yep. Okay, okay. Um, so we are doing health alerts. So I don't know if there's something other chapters doing and I'm having to, how, where do I find or how do I put that in context of health alerts and how we are keeping the chapter abreast? Or is that something that everybody- Is this like the five-star- healthy chapter thing is that what you're referencing oh okay i guess i need to ask the previous no we were doing health alerts and i thought that was part of public policy advocacy that what the chapters were doing um all the chapters so i guess not <laughs> if it's the five star like healthy chapter there's someone on the national team that i can introduce you to to help explain okay. that to you hey, that'd be um, great. yeah just shoot me an email and remind me um, so I can then connect you, like ask the, cause I'm not going to ask that question correctly. I just know myself and I'm not really super following. Um, so just shoot me an email and I'll connect you to, I believe it's Tanya on my team. So I can get you to her and then y'all can get everything you need. Thank you. Michaela. 
Hey, I'm just picking back on, on the prior comment when we were talking about hijacking uh, either committees or bills, et cetera. We have, I think, a case in point right now where the Armed Services Committee, I believe, is being hijacked by one member um, in particular in terms of nominations and stuff like that. Can you talk about what actions are being taken to avoid or prevent that in the future? Um, and if not, I've got a couple of ideas of what we can be hijacking from the NAPO side. <laughs> it just takes one person. <laughs> yes. And unfortunately, that's what I was talking about, how like the Senate, the power of one individual is so much higher than the power of one individual in the House. Um, I can say that I know in the Senate, um, the other members are working with him to try to um, fix some of these situations. Um, but I can say that um, it is a work in progress. Um, but yes, that can happen. And we, as a, if there were particular, I need to look at all the secretaries and positions that he's um, specifically holding up, because if there are women and business related, that could be something where NABO could, you know, insert, insert ourselves in that space and reach out and give our viewpoints. Just want to make sure that it's staying in our lane. Um, so I need to review again, which ones he's specifically looking at, but Yes, that is unfortunately, and I welcome your emails of ideas to help um, to help the scenario. And is that Cornella? I can't remember. Yeah, I, I'll just say quickly, Elle, I'm right here in North Carolina. So if you ever need me, I can be there in an hour and 30 minutes. But um, I, I know it's going to take all our hands um, and locally. Um, we definitely need to be involved locally and then nationally because that drives it up. So, yeah, let us know what we can do and how we can do. But I'm assigned to this. It's part of my calling. So just let me know. But I'll shoot you an email, too. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you so much. And, you know, I'm a prompt person and I don't like to keep y'all over the hour and we are one minute over. So I'm going to let everyone get back to their day jobs. And I appreciate all the um, dialogue, the information. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. And Sandy, don't worry, I'm gonna copy the chat before I close this out. Thank y'all so much.